draft recommending system. Good morning. Welcome to the House Committee on Environment and Energy. Um, we're going to continue picking up where we left off yesterday on our walk through H687 version 4.1 with our Legislative Council, picking up on page 93. Uh, Ellen Chaikowski, Office of Legislative Council. Yes, so last night when we left, we were t you were talking about page 93, which starts um, the amendments to the Municipal and Regional Planning Fund to add resilience. So you started talking about the concept. I didn't. Sh we didn't talk about the specific language in it, so I didn't know where you wanted to start. With, with the language, would be great. Okay, thank you. So just uh, to remind you, we talked about this a little bit yesterday. There exists in 4306 uh, the Regional and Municipal Planning Fund. Um, it is funded by 17% of the property transfer tax, uh, plus any appropriations, of which there have been a few in the last few years. Um, that pot of money is then divided between 10% goes to the Vermont Center for, for Geographic Information, 70% goes to the Regional Planning Commissions, and then 20% are municipal grants for a lot of different um, planning projects. Um, and so the language, the new language, uh, starts at the bottom of page 94. Uh, so this section is adding a reference to resilience and climate change in a few different places under this. And so under the disbursement to municipalities, um, a municipality shall, so down on line 19, shall have voted at an annual or special meeting to provide local funds for municipal planning and resilience purposes and regional plan uh, regional planning purposes. Uh, it then adds language, similar language on page ninety five. So funds allocated to municipalities shall be for shall be used for the purposes of, and then down on line seventeen, acquiring development rights, conservation easements, or title to those lands, areas, and strictures identified in either regional or municipal plans as requiring special consideration for provision of needed housing, aquifer, aquifer protection, aquifer, <coughs> flood protection, climate resilience, open space, farmland preservation, or other conservation purposes. So those are the, so it's, so that's in addition to those other two things which are um, regarding things they can already apply for for grants, which are largely around planning, so municipal planning, the different types of plans, and bylaw adoption. So it's adding flood protection and climate change, uh, climate resilience specifically as what they can use the funds for. <coughs> That's it, really flood protection um, would be pretty broad, I guess, in climate resilience. So communities would have a lot of latitude there to find. I guess that's a question. I shouldn't make that statement. Sure. Um, I do think that the uh, department issues guidelines on what types of projects they think would be eligible, and then the municipalities make an application um, for a specific grant amount. So, yes, I think it's fairly broad. <clears throat> Thank you, Madam Chair. So, line 19, um, what you just said, so shall vote on a special meeting to provide local funds for municipal planning and resilience purposes. Does that mean the, when the municipality, is that defined, could that be like the planning commissions or the, like the, <coughs> a town-wide or a city-wide vote? Um, I believe it's a, a city, a town-wide vote, yeah. Because okay. at an annual or special meeting. Okay, so they, they would add that, like you say, either a special meeting, uh, like, okay, so the annual meeting, so they would just add something to the list of whatever they're voting on. Yeah, and right. it would be to make an application for these funds. They have to apply for them and then receive a grant. I see. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. So do you know what, that out. Uh, the same section, line 15A, 4350 of this title, shall be confirmed under section 4350 or... Uh, so 4350 is the 
section that um, is the process by which a municipal plan is confirmed by the regional plan. The town puts it in their town plan. They don't need to vote on it. Chris Cochran, do you have insight into this? Yeah, yeah the RPCs confirm the municipal plan. They need a planning process, and the RPCs need to confirm the process for them to be eligible for these planning plans. Okay, but then there's a list of things that like or or and then B. I guess I'm surprised about the voting, the thing that where the language is inserted. Vote to apply for planning. We want the municipal, um, the, the local board, the lead town leadership to be aware <coughs> that they've applied for this grant. The intent behind that is oftentimes the planning commission, or in the past, the planning commission has applied for a grant unaware um, and didn't inform this, the select board of their plans. Oh. The work happens, and there's not yeah. a lot of local support or awareness about what was applied for. So making sure that everybody is on the same page before the application is submitted is the intent of that. Okay, so this is not a town-wide vote. This is a vote of the legislative body of the town. Okay, thank you. Sorry. Yeah. Got it. Okay. It's, so, okay. Is that so it's not, it's not something like when you go to the polls, it's right. not going to be there. No. Okay. Okay. Thank you. All right. Any other questions question. on the section representative? Yeah, I'm, 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 I'm just hung up on the word annual. I'm a select board member and we meet <coughs> twice a month, <coughs> except for the summertime, once a month. We don't really have an annual meeting other than after town hall meeting to uh, to appoint the new select board member. So what what is, a little explanation on what it means by annual meeting, so I'm not misinterpreting. And again, this is the municipal, correct? You. Peter Gregory. Uh, Peter Gregory, Two Rivers out of Queechee Regional Commission. Chris was correct about making sure select boards know when, uh, what's going on as far as applying for municipal planning grants, but this section of statute talks about uh, the process that we as RPCs have to go through to lead to confirmation. And one of the requirements of confirmation is that the town is supporting uh, local planning and regional planning. It has nothing to do with the grant application, the municipal <coughs> grant application. So if there's a planning commission, they provide them some budget for their operations, uh, they're doing some kind of regional planning, then the RPC can check off that they are uh, doing that. And the town's appropriate money at an annual or special town meeting, so that's where that is. So it's like in the town budget. We can find a planning commission budget, they do a capacity study, they fund solid waste planning. Something okay. Like yeah, thank you. So I have a question then. Does it make sense? It, because it's really sort of, is the town doing broader? Are they committed to planning? Does it make sense to have this added language, planning and design services? Is that a question of me? Yes. Uh, if, if, if the fund is being renamed Resilience, I think it might be uh, uh, helpful to, to demonstrate that a town is, is uh, providing funding for resilience planning as well. If they're undertaking, say, a hazard mitigation plan with 80% FEMA money, they've got to come up with a 20% match. That's a demonstration that they're using local funds for resilience planning. As just one example. Thank you. When, when you say you contact the select boards, in, in what manner do you? Emails, letters, or do you contact the, the town clerk for forwarding, or? Uh, if we want to uh, contact the select board members, we do so directly or through the town manager or something like that, either okay. in person or through email, uh, not town clerks. I mean, we go right to the source. Yeah, we have a town administrator that... Uh, right, so we would uh, defer to that uh, chain of command, okay, so to good. speak. Good, thank you. Um, Chris Carpenter from the department. I would say the municipal planning grant fund is incredibly flexible right now. Um, I, I don't necessarily see this language as even needed. Um, a directive to focus on you know, climate adaption and resilience is something that we're already, we're, we're doing. Um, so you know, do what you need to do, but I, I don't think that specific directive language is, is necessary because the program is so flexible right now. You. Uh, 
give us an example of a uh, resilience <coughs> grant that has happened through this program? I don't know. Jacob, have we funded? Yeah, um, Jacob Emmerich, uh, Department of Housing and Community Development. Uh, just uh, last year, for example, um, Salisbury uh, is working on bylaws that looks at their forest blocks locally. Um, so uh, that, that potentially could be considered an element of resilience. Um, and off the top of my head, I'm, I can't think of another direct flood resilience related project, um, but we can follow up with that, Representative Spelia. Great, thanks. I yeah, if I get it, you know, it's the fund is small right now, um, and really the focus for the last several years has been bylaw modernization to support housing. So that's been our priority. Um, additional funds were added for that. Um, if there's additional funds, there's more opportunities to fund different types of projects, and that's the recommendation. So would um, specifically um, a town, um, I have a request from three towns in our region that are struggling to deal with water. Um, uh, around, they need help with um, hydrology study and um, also thinking about um, writing grants for projects that are going to be necessary as a result of that. So is that something that can be considered under the... Typically, I'm not under the current structure. You know, something like that. You know, the MTAP program is a, you know, a, a capacity booster, an opportunity for communities to get additional assistance for other grant writing. Um, we tend to have a more specific focus on like, what is the project you're trying to achieve. Um, we don't support generally just staff time for grant writing. <clears throat> So on page 96, there's session law um, regarding this program, so funding for it. So on page 96, section 41, ACCD shall rename uh, the Municipal Planning Grant Program uh, as the Municipal Planning and Resilient Grants Program, Resilience Grant Program. In addition to other funds appropriated to ACCD for grants under this section, $1.5 million is appropriated from the general fund to the Municipal and Regional Planning and Resilience Fund for the following purposes. Assistance to municipalities to support resiliency planning and identify and plan for resiliency projects to reduce damages from flooding and other climate related hazards. And funding for regional planning commissions to increase staff in order to support municipalities to in conducting climate resiliency planning, project development and impl implementation, and hazard mitigation locally, regionally, and on a watershed scale. So um, I just asked this question, and it seems here. Um, <coughs> Assistance to municipalities, support resiliency planning, and identifying plans for resiliency projects to reduce damages for flooding and climate change hazards. Um, Jacob, do you want to comment? So, is this a one-time uh, use that we would envision here? So, uh, my towns that are struggling to deal with water um, and have asked for help. This is the help that I think they're asking for, but I think you said that, that would not qualify. So can I just ask the council to clarify yes. something first? So this, we've renamed the fund. Is it this would be going into the fund that exists now with a one-time allocation of $1.5 million from the general fund, as it's written right now? Yeah. Okay. Well, combined with the changes in that prior section we were just discussing, yes, with this. Yeah. Okay. I think that just level sets so we understand what we're doing here. And then Representative Sebelius' question about how would the um, agency kind of interpret this and utilize those extra dollars? Yeah, well, we take our direction from you, obviously. Um, most right now, currently, you know, the municipal planning grant, the municipality applies <coughs> for the grant. Um, they, many times they choose to work with an RPC, but they also can work with an independent consultant. Um, so these are provisions that are already allowed. So I don't know if, you know, if, if sub two is necessarily needed. Um, because that's the way the program already works. Um, if you want directive language about the types of projects that we can qualify for, we can 
can do that. There are other funds, you know, um, Vermont Emergency Management pays for hazard mitigation grant planning, and then there's a lot of <coughs> other pieces of money into the works, but. So, Cecilia, that's what the, so we're doing two things here, I think, right? So we're changing the fund first to allow for resilience projects to come out of the fund. And then in the second, we have a, a session law proposal to change the program for forever? No, not forever. No, and so I didn't draft this language, but this is attaching to the 1.5 million uh, like conditions. Just to that one point, not to the mm -hmm. actual program. Just well, I think, so the first part is broadening the program so that more types of grants can be uh, given, right? So so right now, you can apply to this program already for updating your town plan and bylaws. So, but the, the existing funding is divided among those different types of projects. This is adding a new type of project to that list. And so then there's this $1.5 million that's being added for the following purposes, so that it's for that new category specifically, I believe. So when that money is spent, does that use go away? No. Okay. Thank you. But I, I, so I didn't, and again, I didn't draft this, but it seems like it's sort of to jumpstart, and then once that money is gone in the future, it'll just be a, a category, and the existing budget, which is somewhere usually between, I think, five hundred and six hundred, seven thousand dollars 7000 somewhere in there, um, it's just on the list of things that municipalities can apply for out of that existing pot. I guess a follow-up question would be how does this interact with the flood, um, the work that um, that farm and his crew are doing. I don't necessarily need that answer right now. It's just thinking about it. Hi, Catherine Dimitrick, Northwest Region Planning. I would just add that I actually think this is a very positive change. I would agree addition that will serve a lot of communities in this time of need where we really need to focus both locally and regionally on mitigation projects. The municipal planning grant program traditionally has been very flexible, easy to access by municipalities in contrast to all the other mitigation funding, which is very complex. You have to go through all the FEMA mm -hmm. hoops. So I think this one-time boost and the addition and broadening of the program generally long-term will be much needed and utilized by our communities. And I want to just remind folks that this is taken from the larger resilience bill that was introduced by the um, Washington County communities that were hit the hardest by the flooding. Representative Smith and then Stone. Thank you. <coughs> On line 14 and line 17, there, there were two purposes. One, the assistance for municipalities, and the other is funding for regional planning commissions. If a community... Uh, NVDA has 52 or 3 towns. They need more staff. Uh, does the town of Derby ask for uh, a grant to, to help provide that staff or do they go to uh, the Regional Planning Commission and ask them to ask for the grant? To me? Anybody that can answer. <laughs> I think that's a good question for it's the regional planners in the room because the... Sorry, I don't um, in my opinion, the way that stra this is drafted, either path would work. So the town of Derby could apply on their own and then choose to hire the Regional Planning Commission to do the work, or NBDA itself could apply to get funding to add a staff person to then do that one-on-one -on -one technical assistance. Okay, that's good. The Thank you. So no wrong door. Okay, and, and then let's just get to the next section, because that also speaks to staff. Right, so on page 97, um, section 42 is adding some new staff. So in addition to other funds appropriated to ACCD in fiscal year 2025, $125,000 is appropriated from the general fund to the agency for the purpose of creating a new permanent full-time position to staff the climate resiliency grants from the Municipal Planning and Resilient Grants Program. In addition to other funds appropriated to a and in fiscal year 2025, $125,000 is appropriated from the general fund to the agency for the purposes of funding a new permanent full-time position in the Water Investment Division of the Department of Environmental Conservation 
for the purposes of assisting in the financing of climate resilience projects from the Special Environmental Revolving Funds under 24 BSA Chapter 120. So a new person to administer the grants and then um, a new person at DEC for financing climate resilience projects. And I don't know too much about the revolving funds. I, I don't know anything about the revolving funds. I'll just say that. <laughs> Thanks, Madam Chair. Um, <clears throat> yesterday, we uh, asked uh, ACCD about how much is granted and what the capacity is. And um, I believe it was stated that 673,000 uh, in grants had gone out to 57 communities, but that there had been about 1.27 million in requests. And my question is, um, I'm not entirely, so that, that funding pot and those overall requests, that was for the municipal planning grant program? Okay. Well, I'm shaking my head, but I... No, someone okay. else is shaking their head. <laughs> okay, good. Okay. So, so to clarify, and, and typically is there, is there a typical, I mean, right now we're saying, so for FY25, we're saying instead of 673, there should be 1.5 million. Is there a typical amount that? Well, what would be, excuse me, yeah. 1.5 over the property transfer tax dollars that go in. It would be a significantly okay. more. Okay. Uh, and sorry, finish your question. No, that was what my, that was what I was trying to get at. Okay. So it's 1.5 plus. So. Um, and I guess I would ask Mr. Cochran, do you have a, does it? Do you need this? Do you need to increase? capacity in order to, if the, if the money goes up, do you need more staff? Um, all these proposals um, to increase the fund and to add staff are not in the governor's budget. So that's what I have to say. And I, and I guess I would you know, say to the committee that um, as we've been told and we're going to take up our budget letter this afternoon at 1 o'clock, um, I think we need to be very uh, cautious or careful in the things that we ask for extra money in this year's budget and expect some trimming after our, when our asks get out of here. Representative Bongard. Uh, uh, not, uh, not a fully thought through thought, but I will say that I'm sitting here looking at the section thinking about the municipal grants that didn't get funded yeah. and wondering whether if we're going to put more money in, because those grants can be used for everything here. They can be used to plan for flood resilience, and that's part of the municipal planning. I, I just wonder if we'd be, to Catherine, I want you to tell me if you don't agree, or just say it to me if you don't agree with me. But I'm, I'm sitting here wondering, rather than doing this section, this section of session law, if we're going to put more money in, it should simply be to more money for the municipal, to fund municipal grants. But I'm, I'm what, what others think, I don't, I don't know. I'm Representative Tory. Thank you. I just wanted to share that um, the town I live in applied. Um, it's time to do our town plan again and did not get funded. Um, so that ask, that support that we need is going to be in our town budget at town meeting. So, um, you know, that's quite a, a lot of need that we just heard um, and some of it's really time sensitive and these choices they have to make about who to give money to are hard um, so I'm, I'm very supportive of more money for this because I think planning as we've been studying together um, is so important right now and we're, we're going to be having to step up our game in a lot of ways so You asked about the kind of, um, I'm not sure the word you used, but anyway, the adding the flood protection, the words flood protection, climb resilience on page 95, and whether they were to, I don't know, I'm not sure what your angle on that was. I'm curious what you're feeling or thinking about adding those words. So I'm just wanting to make sure that we, I mean, I think our communities need a lot of help thinking about what to do with water. And so I'm just wanting to make sure that there's flexibility there in terms of, um, you know, that could be some community discussions or um, facilitated community discussions. I mean, some of these conversations could be excruciating um, in the communities. And 
so it's really wanting to understand if, what the limits are of <clears throat> and what that flexibility is. I do have, does that help? I think so. I mean, I guess, the, yeah, and it helps. I think that it's even even though it may already be happening now, if we put it in statute, it's a sign to our communities that we think it's important and that we encourage them to use their planning efforts. Hopefully, we can fund them to do this work. So I support putting that language in on page 95. And um, to the extent that when we do our budget request, we think about this other section that includes one-time dollars, and then um, always remembering uh, I guess the planning positions would, we're asking that those go more broadly into the general fund <coughs> and not be one time in this bill. Is that correct? Uh, well, they would be one time funded for the initial, and then they would go into the agent, each agency's budget long term. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Further discussion on this one for now? Yes, on the second position. Yeah. Um, in that water investment division. Um, so I just want to make sure I understand the uses. I was just looking that up. So I've heard from some of the engineers in our region that the um, applications are really held up on water systems, um, like extensively held up, um, which is a concern I'm thinking about some of the other aspects of this legislation. But it also talks about. Um, other projects that can be funded, other water projects that can be funded, or from the water. Um, so I'm just wondering. Uh, this talks about climate resilience. Certainly, clean water is. Where did this language come from, and what is it intended to do? Lots of good projects. I just want to make sure I understand what I think it, it's you know. intended to do that. Michael O'Grady drafted it. Okay. So we need to have him on you know, okay. it if we want okay. if we want to pursue that and, and include it. Okay. And it came from Carrie Dolan's bill for right. Right. one of those six eight eight six. Six eight five six eight. Oh we killed. All right. <clears throat> so, um, on page 97, section 43 starts the designated area update based on the report. Oh yeah, so uh, the timelines from yesterday. The third timeline uh, isn't really a true timeline. It, I pulled out all the dates from the designated area report to line them up because I don't think they all quite match, um, <coughs> but as is the case with this bill, it's been drafted in pieces over time, so you just want to line them up. Um, and so there are there is some new language in this section, uh, well, later sections, but just to remind you, um, there was a report on updating the designated area program. Currently in statute, we have five designated areas, downtowns, village centers, uh, and new town centers, plus the overlay districts of growth centers and neighborhood development areas. The proposal is to streamline that into, well, I guess two designations now, which are either centers or neighborhood development areas. There is a proposal to have the third, which was planned growth areas, which your bill adopts in the earlier sections, and that's the areas that can be exempt from Act 250. So how it is drafted currently is that it, re it first repeals the existing chapter, one seven, uh, chapter 76A, which is the downtown program. So actually, I think I need to just rewind, because yesterday we, we agreed to say that those were not designations. The Act 250 is a status. It's like a process of, that you go through to get exemption. And it's not supposed to be a state designation. So sure. I'm just reflecting that there were these reports that sort of lined up. And now, so what's in here probably doesn't reflect what you just said, or at least it's getting closer to that. 
So first, it repeals all of the existing chapter and creates a new chapter where it does take some of the existing language um, and, and keeps it, but uh, it, a lot of other changes, a lot, a lot of names of things are being changed and the processes have been changed. So that's what's going on. So <clears throat> section 44 is all of the new chapter on the state community revitalization program what they're going to call it now. So um, <clears throat> the first change in the definition section, there's just some minor changes. It strikes the definition of downtown or village, um, partially because there's this definition of downtown center or village center which is going to be sort of the primary designation that people can seek. Uh, and then the reference to 4348 is being added here and on the next page. Um, so that's the section on the element of the regional planning. No, plans. On page, so on page 101, the reference has been added to um, 6033, which is your tier 1A status. So, <coughs> I'm sorry, just uh, can go back here to, I'm with you. We repeal the old and then we're reestablishing so how much of this language in on page 98 and 99, like if I were, is, is existing language that we're modifying slightly? Most of it. So the last time I walked through this, we did, we did this. Right, so like the first one, yeah. community revitalization program means the program established in this chapter as adapted from the former designated area program. So obviously that's a new definition, but referencing the prior one. Uh, complete streets, that's referencing the existing definition in uh, the transportation chapter. So that's just a cross-reference. Department, is the department. Um, so Subsection 5, which references downtown and village center, that's the new designation that's essentially taking over for the core designations, um, which, so that is a new definition here. Uh, infill is a, des is a definition that's being added. Uh, local downtown organization is an existing concept that I think is defined in the existing chapter. Planned growth area is new, that's part of the new concept. Regional plan future land use map, that's an existing concept that wasn't defined here previously. So smart growth principles, this is kind of the big one. This is, an exist this is the existing definition from chapter 76A just being moved over. Sprawl repair is a new definition. At the bottom of page 100. And I apologize. I'm having a hard time tracking the changes on this. So, but as in, in the um, section by section that you did for us, whether it was already existing or new? No. <coughs> And I will just say, I think that this entire proposal is a, has been in flux, and so that's why perhaps some of the language is rough and needs to have the consistency lined up, make sure it's still, and, and it is somewhat tied to the decisions you have made recently in the first part of this bill, too, so. Uh, 
uh, state board. There is an already there is already an existing state board. Do you want me to read the definition? Um, so I just want to make sure I understand. So you said this is a new definition, new yes. term. Is this something? So is this a new concept, or is this employed somewhere in our state policies <coughs> right now, or our land use policies? Is it called something else? Um, I'd like to. So it's being added because it is, in fact, being added in the text. It is not. Uh, to my knowledge, currently defined in the statute. Um, I think it would be helpful for Chris Cochran to speak to why it's here and how it yeah, so Chris, takes your work. Yeah, Chris Cochran from the department. Um, um, there, in some communities, you know, these, these auto-oriented areas, they have road systems, they have infrastructure, they have, in some sense, some communities, sidewalks. Um, but they're auto-oriented, so there's, they are ripe for redevelopment. I, I think the future of our retail is a little uncertain, and we would like to be able to support communities that want to make these areas more walkable, bikeable, accessible, <coughs> um, and looking for these places to, to be <coughs> housing or redevelop as housing. But it's never been defined. <coughs> it's a concept that's out there, but it's not something that's been on the but then this definition came from your process, your off session process. Did it, Jacob? Do you remember? I don't. Yeah. Well, the, the uh, Jacob Amber, for the record, the way that it's being used in this bill is um, under the establishment of the designation as a funding priority uh, mechanism, and the reason it's being mentioned is because the con the regional mm -hmm. land use concepts of the village areas and the planned uh, growth areas uh, includes both existing settlement but may include some areas that are transitioning from uh, from a kind of a sprawl straight to a more compact, walkable uh, settlement. And so when you see that appear in the bill, it's going to be in 5805 talking about that the priority should be given, the funding priority, uh, that any subsidies should, um, for sprawl repair, should come after the maintenance of um, uh, a primary commitment to uh, centers. I think that's the reading this right. So, we'll get, go ahead. That was how far um, the quick foot session went after maintenance of the centers. <coughs> Funding priorities should come after maintenance of the. the yeah, so it's used in 5805 says sprawl repair or infill development locations within a neighborhood is secondary to a primary commitment to maintain the livability and maximize the climate resilience and flood safe potential of these areas. Okay. And, and that may, I, there may be another appearance where, where you'll see it as you read through these sections. So it's a new... Um, so a state board, there is already a state board, but it's getting a new name the Community Revitalization Board, which we'll talk about in the next section. State designated downtown or village center um, is being defined here. That is the new uh, center. Um, and we'll just need to make sure that this definition lines up with how you decide the process is going to work. Um, and then same with state designated neighborhood, that's the other designation that's being created in this uh, section. <clears throat> Just flagging. Um, so here, I'm struggling, I think. I, I feel like this is an accomplishment to be able to articulate with the definitions of the types of lands in the tiers, with the definitions of the types of land in the map, the new future land use maps, and then here, and um, reconciling those definitions. Try right again. Okay, so I feel like you're an affirmation. Okay. Yes, I sympathize. Okay. Do you, do you, okay. Do you, do you, do you. So 
Madam Chair, um, if I may ask uh, uh, Chris, so this old chart um, that you're going to update for us. Uh, so state designated downtown and village center or center, would that be what is listed here as core? Okay. And the state designated neighborhood or neighborhood is neighborhood. But okay. Just clarifying that. So this is center. <coughs> yeah, I think we did those maps in January or that chart in January. Yeah, yeah. Things have evolved yeah. since but we're working on lining it up. Iterative process. Thank you. So the intention here is that the state designated downtown and village center, the center, is going to be the same thing as an area with a tier 1A status. So that seems like what it's, it is implied here. So, as I sort of just mentioned, this year, what you've been developing in this bill has been evolving. Right. So I don't know that so to I, be true. I would go back to page 99, definition number 8, my growth area is the And it says in there. But not necessarily. My growth area means an area on the regional future land use maps. Which may encompass downtown center or village center. So it may have, it may be a center. I mean, I think it would be a center, but I don't think a center necessarily is a plan growth area yeah, unless they get apply for that status change. Right, so I guess under 13, <coughs> that center definition, then we want we don't want the language about designated by ERB under. Um, well, right. Yeah, so I was kind of just saying that I don't know if that definition is accurate anymore based on the decisions you've been just making. And I actually don't even planned growth, the planned growth area definition that you just referenced. Again, you are, you are creating in 6,033 tier 1A status. So the proposal from the designated area report was to create this designation called planned growth area where there would be Act 250 exemptions. So I think that that concept is being sort of subsumed by your tier 1A status. So yeah. you may not even need this reference. Yeah, and I actually was going to ask Chris, like, it seems like I don't understand why it needs to have the, the status of Act 250 embedded in it. Is there a reason for that? No, so we could remove that. Yeah. When we were all working in silos, <laughs> yeah, the opportunity to kind of pull all these things up has really been in here. Yeah. Um, so I think there's opportunities to clarify to who does what. And, and, and I think so too, and we will continue to make that effort. Right. Um, and so related to that, on page 102, there's a definition of tier 1A planned growth area that needs to line be lined up with the decisions you have recently made. Well, I think I need to ask you, Ellen, does it need to be at all? Well, probably probably not. Okay. But I I'd, I'd like to remove it. I mean, I'd like to make yeah. sure that makes I don't yeah. see I don't I've never quite understood why they were conflated so like I like to Thank you. And similar on page 101, lines 17, 18, again, the designated by ERB yes, language. Thank you. Yes. I, uh, yes. Thank we, you. We need to clean up yeah. few, quite a few things. Ultimately, yeah, thanks. Ultimately, I mean, I think that'll be super helpful that the last 30 pages are incentives through ACCD, and the mid 30 pages are planning with some of the tiers, and then the first 30 pages is professionalization of the board. Like, I just yeah. thank you for. Yeah. 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 
still are still so, number five. But. Right. <laughs> All right. Um, um, just maybe first money. So there is a definition uh, on page 102 for design for Vermont <coughs> downtown program. So that means a Main Street America coordinating program that helps community revitalization and economic vitality while preserving the historic character of Vermont's downtown cores. The Vermont Downtown Program provides downtowns with financial incentives, training, and technical assistance, supporting local efforts to restore historic buildings, improve housing, design walkable communities, and encourage economic development by incentivizing public and private investments. So this language was sent to me, so I don't know if this already exists. <coughs> This, this is new language, but it reflects our current practice right now. Our, this is, this is our, essentially our, our downtown program. Um, this is our, I don't want to use the word tier, <laughs> but our, our flagship designation um, that offers the highest benefits to our larger regional centers. Many of them participate in the Main Street program, which is a national program, um, and we just want to <coughs> into the lobby. But is, do you have to participate in Main Street America program? It's not required. It's I mean, encouraged. it seems odd to call out something like that in statute. We don't normally do that. So unless there's a benefit to doing it, is there a benefit to doing it? For the, for, uh, the municipalities decide if they want to participate. But yeah, I mean, it's, it's something that we strongly encourage because they get a lot of support from this national organization as far as they're connected to a network of all the national downtowns are connected to a listserv and all the resources that this organization provides <coughs> are above and beyond what we can do. Right, I understand that, but it, it, in terms of the definition, this is a definition section of the Vermont Downtown Program. You don't have to be in this Main Street America program to do that, so I don't think it's a good definition. If, you see what I mean? The, the staff person who runs the program <laughs> felt strongly that it should be here, but if, if you disagree, then. Well, I don't want towns that don't participate to not be eligible to participate in the Vermont Downtown Program. Is, um, it, is it changing that? Well, based on that information, too, I think I could maybe reframe this a little bit, because I did kind of think it was part of Main Street America. So it, it, it may be better to even just rephrase to say a program that is part of the department that coordinates with Main Street America or something like that. Um, but I, I was very confused by this definition, and also I don't even, you might not even need it, because, because also why would it, wouldn't it be a, a, like a segment of the community revitalization program? Just to, if it, if we found that it's helpful to have the program defined for people to go, Look, we could, we could say the Mark Downtown Program helps support community revitalization and, and just get rid of the reference to Main Street American Coordinating Program. And you could still do it, you could still bring that in, but, but I agree it's a question of if, if we're going to leave it, that might be a way to do it, and then the question is, to, does it need to be there? And I, I So the community revitalization program is different from this? Vermont Downtown Program? Chris? So, I think this is focused on the operation of the Downtown <coughs> Program. It is, the Downtown Program is a member, a coordinating partner of this Main Street Program. It's not requiring municipalities to But is it separate from your other program, Community Revitalization Program? There's, it, yes and no. The de, you know, I have a separate staff person who is the Downtown Program Manager. There is a definition of what the benefits are for if you're a designated downtown. So within the umbrella of the revitalization program, there's you know, downtowns and villages. Um, so it is different. It provides different benefits to the community, and it has a full-time staff person who supports the designation programs or the downtown designation. Okay. Let's keep moving forward and see how it plays into the rest of the <coughs> Um, and then the last definition is village area, which I think you may have changed to Hamlet yesterday. <laughs> no, I don't think we can. Because it's elsewhere. <laughs> it's elsewhere. Yeah. Then we're not doing that. Okay. 
engineering. <laughs> we, well, you just let me know. Um. <laughs> Village Edge? It's a web marketing. <laughs> this is also on the future land use map. Yes. <clears throat> Uh, Peter <clears throat> Thank you. Um, th I think this was another one of those definitions that uh, uh, don't belong in this section of the bill, you know, as we compartmentalize between the ERB and the planning and the uh, uh, incentives. This is the definition of regional planning, not right. of any of the state designated programs. Well, and helping us find our way in the other definitions that, that that same category would be much appreciated. Yeah. And, but, that's it. I mean, I think there was an interest in specifically having this cross-reference, because I think it's used later to say if something has been mapped as a village area on the Regional Planning Commission, it can be it can be designated as, I don't know, a village, whichever one, village center or neighborhood. So uh, yes, it is in a separate thing, but I think there was intent originally that those two things should be used together. So. Again, we are kind of in flux here a little bit, but I do think it is used later. Okay. Um, so next is the state board. So currently it's the state downtown board. It is being renamed here as the Vermont Community <coughs> Finalization Board, but still being referred to as state board. Um, the Uh, I, there is a list of, this is largely the same uh, membership of the board that currently exists with a couple of exceptions. So on page 103, um, the highlighted language um, is, so the, a member of the community designated by the director of racial <coughs> equity. Um, currently, I don't think the director of racial equity is a member on the board, but this would give her the ability to designate a member to be part of this board. And I think we can testimony as per their suggestion, but I also am not sure that we need to change it because they can designate that person so they can designate whomever they find to be appropriate. Um, and we also heard the request Currently, this would add um, three more as proposed. So the additional additions are the rep, uh, the executive director of the Vermont Bond Bank, the treasurer, and a representative appointed by the Office of Racial And did you consider um, having someone from the Regional Development Corporation? It's not considered. No. the um, pickup on that, Madam Chair, and given that these designations are really about economic and community development incentives, um, and <coughs> I, I feel like that, that may be a good addition. It is a quite large board. Quite large. <laughs> if we have the time, I, has the board ever, like, the history of some of the votes, I mean, has it ever been super contentious or voting no on X, Y, or Z? I mean, my sense is, it, it, just a little background yeah, about well, that. Yeah, well, when Peter Gregory was on the board, it was very contentious. But <laughs> 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 um, it, it, it's very, it's very, his, the old history um, <coughs> in prior administrations when the growth center designation was um, very prominent. I think some <coughs> positions were very controversial at the time. I think uh, I've been doing this job for about 10 or 11 years. Um, 
from my experience, most decisions are, are unanimous. Um, so things are, I'm, are rarely contentious. I can't think of. Um, you know, there are times when the board <coughs> disagrees with a staff recommendation, but that's their prerogative. Yeah, but things are usually very predictable. And you have already, I think, spoken to this, but since it's helpful for us to hear again as the bill evolves a little bit, um, speak to how your suggestions, like your change vision for the board. Right. Just, just, just backing up a little bit, um, and sorry for repeating. The, the downtown designations was an area that everybody can kind of agree that these are places that should grow and develop, where housing should occur, where, where investment should occur. Um, there was difficulty in finding an agreement on kind of Act 250 exemptions for the center, so they became a proxy for deregulation or Act 250 exemption. Um, what this proposal does is it disaggregates those <laughs> concepts. So this board becomes primarily a coordinating board and an investment board to support community revitalization. It moves <laughs> the regulatory functions that currently reside with the board over to the ERB. And I would add, it simplifies the process for becoming designation, designated by working closely with the RPC's work they already do to map communities and areas for investment. By recognizing the work they do, it integrates <coughs> state investments in centers with the regional planning process. We tangentially linked before, but this actually kind of gets us all working on the same page. Thanks. Thanks. Yeah, I'm wondering whether revitalization is really the word that makes most sense here. Like, when I think of revitalization, I think of perhaps in this context, I would think of like a community that has gone into like some state of long decline and we're trying to bring them back to some former state. And I'm not sure that's really what we were wanting to do here across the board. Like, that might be the case in particular communities, but pre presumably there will be communities in this program that are, you know, fairly well functioning and <coughs> not like we're trying to bring them back to some form of glory, but just trying to keep them moving in a healthy direction. So, a thought on a different, better word? Development. Investment. Um, investment. I, had, <laughs> I had originally just called it the state designated area board. It's handing out incentives to designated areas. <laughs> but what, for what purpose? It's, I think, in, to represent when, when, when we, Chris Coffin. When we, Chris Coffin from the department. When we did our um, designation 2050 stakeholder engagement, nobody knew what designation program was. No, I don't so. think it's a designation program. I think it's an economic development or a what did you just incentive. Say? <laughs> community investment. Investment. investment board. Mm -hmm. Community investment board, community investment board, because then it doesn't get across with other community investment It's a name. <laughs> it's a name. I just wanted to clearly articulate what the, the intent of this work is. Thank yeah. you. Uh, I think your point's well taken. Does anyone disagree? My community certainly doesn't have any problem with revitalization. <laughs> but one day they'll be vitalized and want just investment. Perhaps. Um, so on page 104 into 105 is the list of duties for the board. Um, this is a little over language here because the, based on our discussion, Friday maybe uh, we're trying to we're trying to get the board out of this the so I'm, I'm sorry <laughs> the designation or the investment board out of having a so to review and issue comments not recommendations Wait, um, did we get to the language out yet? Of that business okay. yeah yeah so I'm just gonna do like okay. an overview of what's included because oh, okay. um, currently their list of duties is is pretty short at least in the statute um, so uh, so first, they are going to elect their own vice <coughs> chair and vice chair. Um, and then, so on line eight though, so the department shall provide legal, staff, and administrative support to the state board in cooperation with the ERB, 
shall produce guidelines to direct municipalities to seek designation under this chapter and for other purposes established by this chapter and shall pay the per diem compensation for the board members. Um, so there was this proposal to add cooperation with the ERB. Don't know if you want to do that. If we're mixing, we're mixing. Yeah. So the, that doesn't, I think that should go. It's an overlay. Uh, so then next they shall meet at least quarterly. The board shall have the authority to adopt rules of procedure to use for appeal of its decisions and rules on handling conflicts of interest. So it's important to remember this is some of this is existing or is it? So I've been trying to point out so this is not existing. Okay. Um, the meet neither is the meet quarterly. So no so no right now the list of things that the describing the board is very minimal. So right now, uh, chair and vice chair, and then administrative support from the department, that is existing. Reference to the ERB is not. Um, meeting at least quarterly is not currently in the statute. Um, and then adopting rules <laughs> is also new. <coughs> In addition, the board shall have the following duties to serve as the funding and benefits coordination for the body of the state community revitalization program. Um, that isn't specifically in the statute currently, but that's implicit in what they do. Uh, to review and issue recommendations <coughs> on proposed regional plan future land use maps prepared by the regional planning commission and presented to the ERB for designated center and designated neighborhood recognition under tier one. Uh, well, no. Yeah, no. So I believe, and I can be corrected, this this current language that's in your draft 4.1 is having, does the ERB make designation decisions? So that is that, and I think we have looked at that before. Um, though I'm getting confused. So, I mean, it seems like that what what I understand, which is trying to articulate this for the room, is open to adjustments, but that the um, through the planning process and the future land use maps, communities are going to identify these areas, and the Environmental Review Board is actually going to approve them, and that this board, the Community Investment Board, will then run their programs to support those identified areas. All right, does anyone disagree with what I just said? Okay, so that's what we need the language to say. Um, the, the statutory interactions and whether how they need to be laid out, we need to just, that, that's what we want it to reflect. Don't use all that cheese that's in there. Representative Morris. Yeah, yeah, thank you, Madam Chair. Just, yeah, you asked if anybody agreed with what you just said, and I and the principle is correct. However, the, the municipalities aren't creating the maps; those reside with the Regional Planning Commission. Well, they're working together to create the maps. Correct. It's what's so uh, it's we're supposed to be bottom up feeding, but it's uh, and what you said you talked about the municipalities had control of the maps or were deciding the areas. So it's um, I think they it's in conjunction with the RPC. Yeah. I, so I, I, I'm just trying to keep that clear in my mind as to. Great. Thanks, Madam Chair. So, building off of what you're saying, I, I'm inferring that the next draft we will not see, you know, the ERB necessarily in here, in this area. I think we'll it'll make, we'll make sure it's in there if it needs to be in there. We'll think about that. Um, meeting that what I just stated as the goal and then a, a follow-up sorry um, I, I sometimes flexibility is uh, more helpful um, and I guess it's a question to, to Chris or whomever is uh, most appropriate presumably this language is in here because you think it'll be helpful yeah. <laughs> so but I I think you did just decide that the reference to the ERB needs to be here. 
Design one. Thank you. Um, it seems to me that for at the bottom of 104 lines 20, 21, um, we can get rid of the and the the sentence can end after commission on line 21 and everything after that commission go away. Seems to review and issue recommendations on proposed regional plans. Um, so yeah, I mean, it's sort of the timing of when this happens. So they're going to, I think they, they would, you're right, review the recommendations on the future land use maps before they're approved by the ERB. And is that just to make sure that, um, you know, the RPC didn't forget about a certain community that the investment board has said we're giving money to them? Or I, I guess I'm, uh, um, what's the purpose? Yeah. From their vote money. What we did earlier in the bill, when, even though we're, even though we're, Separating, we allowed the investment board to comment just because they're kind of in this together, even though it's really the, the regions and ERB and the towns, they're making all the decisions. And on one level, the investment board is irrelevant to that. But we thought it made sense to allow them to comment just because there is ultimately interaction. So I would, if we were going to leave this in here, I would get away from the word recommendation and use the word comment because it's I think it's legitimate to comment it might be helpful but that's it mm. and um, so you could you could yes. do it either like representative Logan said that works or you could let it go on a little bit longer through and present it to the environmental board period <laughs> but either way but comments, I think, getting to Google, comment is the key to this. I think, you, yeah, I agree with what Representative Logan suggested and what you just suggested. Comment and then period after commission. Okay. Representative Sebelia. I'm not sure if I'm seeing NRB. I can't uh, see I them. Just, yeah, they're <laughs> waving. Yeah, sorry. Yeah. BPL Executive Director of Natural Resources Board. Um, I'm just uh, remarking that under this section, um, the, or the previous section, I should say, the NRB or the ERB, sorry, is part of this uh, board, this new board, whatever that might name might be. Right. Um, and it is also potentially they're providing recommendations or comments um, to itself, mm -hmm. in a, or yeah. you know, in front of itself, and it's going to be reviewing that application. So it just seems a little bit awkward. Um, the way that that is structured. So you're agreeing with our striking it? Yeah. 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 Oh. yeah. Oh. Maybe I'm just not following where, it's, <laughs> where we're ultimately going on this piece, but I just wanted to flag that. So, um, it's awkward there. well, I think you're alluding to line three on page 104, that right. they're a member. So we had a, I raised this in the last draft, whether or not you want to keep oh. them as a member. Yeah, I was wondering about that too. Oh, that must be that I remembered you raised it. I, I'm wondering why they would be there. They're currently a member. Yeah, we're we, yeah we are a member right now, but we don't have the same review capacity of uh, their decisions. So this now that there's creation of a review capacity by the ERB, Got it. it's a little awkward. Yeah. With the large board. <laughs> We strike, board? <laughs> strike, and we, all, we did say we would put the regional development corporations on there, so they had the same size. Oh, okay. Yeah. Are you want them to appoint their own members, the R RDCs? Or? Um, yeah, I mean, that's what the others are doing. Okay. 
Yeah, on page 105, line three. So that could be cut, right? Because we're having them comment. Yeah, I would. I would cut three. Yeah. I don't, I'm, I'm sorry. Do we on two? Are we ending after commission? Yes, yeah. Kate suggested. That's where we land. <clears throat> Um, I would not, I would suggest maybe don't do that, but you can. Don't do what? Strike the end of that sentence. Why are you suggesting that? Well, because that is sort of specific to what the board is looking at, which is the designated center and designated neighborhood, which is what they oversee. So I guess you don't have to leave that in there, but that's, uh, that's, sort of why I think I phrased it that way. But they don't get recognized under 10 VSA 633, do they? Well, it depends. Because that's that. 250. Right, so 33 might be Steps. the wrong cross-reference now. Maybe that's why it seems odd. Yeah. Um, there was another 33 and a 32 at some point, so it might be the wrong cross-reference now. Um, but I think <coughs> big picture, I think that the, all right, fine, I'll just stop. I, I, I'll just, I, because, no, but I get where you're. But the ERB doesn't have any role in providing recognition for designated centers and designated neighborhoods. Wrong. That's wrong. So they, do. they approve the maps. Yes. Which is where they, they have approved. Them. Them. Okay. Well, what are you thinking? I think you're always thinking a little bit more than we first appear. So. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, so the ERB really does get to say yay or nay to like who. ACC, like the sure. downtown, the community re revitalization board gets to participate in these programs, these designated center and designated neighborhood programs, because no. that's what it seems to they, me right. to be well, saying. They get to. Because the designation program is ACCD. Yes. The Act 250 is ERB. Yes. Right, but so they don't say yay or nay whether they're in, but they do say yay or nay or whether the areas identified are eligible to be in the program and then the process that occurs now and to the extent that we fund and then maybe grow the program this board will oversee that the choosing who who gets a grant and who doesn't right so I think and I do think we should get clarity on this because this has been tricky for me this whole time which is I think initial designation is basically automatic based on if the map is approved that's the intention is to get this board out of the business of worrying about that where we've been headed. Okay. Yes. Let's get through this, the duties of the board and then we'll take a break. Um, right. So then on 105 number, so you were just talking about three, but to recommend to the ERB condition designation approvals and modification to the regional plan featured land use maps presented for the designated areas. No, we're starting that. Thanks. Um, and then you already struck in the last draft recommending suspension or removal of designation approved. Um, and then five is to award the, yeah. Well, this is just a recommendation. Yeah. 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 They might. Uh, five is to award the tax credits, which is already existing. Six is to manage the downtown transportation fund, which is already existing duty. Um, to have stand, and then number seven is to have standing and regional plan approvals before the, the ERB. Hmm. Why would you like that? Thanks. <laughs> okay, that's why it's bold. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, and to review and comment on Environmental <coughs> Review Board guidelines, rules, or procedures as they relate to the designations <coughs> of this chapter. Do we have the Environmental Review Board, is that one of the tasks of our Environmental Review Board to have procedures related to the designation program? Now the ERB doesn't look at designations, the ERB looks at status. Right, right. So that's the holdover word. Yeah, okay. right. What we mean okay. there is status. <coughs> that no, that's, doesn't quite work in that sense, but. To the Act 250 status. Well, and the future land use tab. Designations. Approvals. Not designations. Yes. Well, this is what we just said yeah. is that yeah, the designations happen. happen during the land use mapping process mm -hmm. as well as the Act 250 status. Right. So I think we wanted to say both. We wanted to say both in eight. The designations and statuses. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's just the designations under this chapter. <laughs> designations become automatic as a result of the status. Yes. Well, what? No, 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 no. We need a workflow. Yeah. Yes. Well, I would love if someone made a chart an yeah. overview of how this is going to work. Yeah. Well, what about as they relate to the Act 250 status and future land use plans under this chapter? As they relate to the Act 250 status and future land use plans mm -hmm. under this chapter. Plans of maps. Maps. Mm -hmm. Because the maps are where the boundaries are covered. So this is on seven. So what we're doing is we're consistent. We're letting them review and comment. With that, let's take a five-minute break. We are going to reconvene our hearing and continue our walkthrough of H687 draft 4.1. All right, so we're on page 105. Uh, on to section 5803. So this is a new section to the chapter, and it may be redundant based on some of the decisions you made, um, but I think it would be good to read through it. So mapping by regional planning commissions. The regional plan future land use map developed per section 4348 of this title shall delineate areas within the regional planning commission's member municipalities that are eligible to receive designation benefits as centers and neighborhoods <coughs> when the future land use map is approved by the ERB per 6033. So 6033 is may or may not be the correct cross-reference right now. Um, but otherwise, there's some new language there. The areas eligible for designation shall be identified on the regional plan future land use map as regional downtown centers, village centers, planned growth area, and village center, uh, village areas in a manner consistent with this chapter. This methodology shall include all approved designated downtowns, villages, new town centers, neighborhood development areas, and growth centers existing on July 1, 2024, unless the subject member municipality requests otherwise. So I do think this is important, because I'm just a little bit confused. This, I think in, in some ways this language is helpful, but I think it needs to make sure it lines up with what you have for the regional plans already. So I'm looking at yeah. the chart right now, and um, so far so good, those terms lining up with the future land use map. I mean, that's good. I actually think this is helpful. This okay. Is, yeah, it's linking it. Um, so on page 106, 
exclusions, with the exception of pre for pre-existing non-conforming designations approved prior to the establishment of the program under this chapter, the, elig the areas eligible for designation benefits upon ERB approval of the Regional Plan Future Land Use Map for designation as a center shall not include leapfrog development that is disconnected from a center and, and that lacks a pedestrian connection to the center via a complete street. So that's where your tie comes in. development. <laughs> Did you see Representative Clifford's yes. tie? Yes. Uh. <laughs> <Wiry. Yeah. laughs> I think they came out of a vernal pool. <laughs> <laughs> they absolutely. I think a mapped vernal pool. Do those dry up? They dry up, and you wouldn't see frogs like that if they did. All right. Anyway, in all seriousness, the question is leapfrog development as a term. Yeah. Question. That is uh, pretty evocative to me of what that means. It's not a defined term. This is new language? Yes. And so how does this sound? If it means what it sounds like it means, how does this connect to transitional areas? Planners, I think. Peter, can you help us out? Does leapfrog development tie to transition areas in some way? Or have you been following where we are? Uh, yes, I believe I have. We are on page 106. Yes. Okay. Leapfrog development to me is scattered development, right? Um, transition areas are areas that might be considered sprawl that are um, being repaired, as we talked about earlier, um, or, or, um, but not extending, you know, so it can't be disconnected. It reminds me of the 9L criterion in Act 250. How I view this. And um, I have a question about the language about the exception of the existing non conforming designations. I was always under the impression that the existing designation program would not have approved leapfrog development. So, do you know what that's referring to? I think early in the uh, history of the downtown program, when I was on the downtown board, we had uh, some approvals of areas that uh, probably wouldn't uh, fit our desire to contain. Uh, so there are some rather large <coughs> existing designations that wouldn't wouldn't survive today. Just at, at a very high level, the difference between leapfrog and, and sprawl. So we should, do, do they mean the same thing? Maybe we should change it to scatter. Yeah. I haven't heard it before. In, in this Does that mean the same thing? We've gone this wrong. I, I was wondering the same thing, honestly. I don't. I don't know. Personally, I, I would not introduce a new term, even if it is uh, uh, evocative. Uh, <laughs> I would. Uh, I would use sprawl. I mean, I think that's what we're talking Thank about you. here, you, which okay. is disconnected. How about does not include this disconnected? What sprawl? Sprawl development. Just, or just, just de development without the word leapfrog. Development that yeah. is just connected. Oh yeah, it already says oh, yeah. that. Okay. Oh. So just get rid of leapfrog. Oh. Yes. It doesn't need a mark. Boo! Kicking my tie out. <laughs> Slam. Oh. It hurts. Frogs belong in their ponds. Hmm. Well, I yeah. All right, moving on. All right. Um, CNE were struck in the last proposed modification because planned growth areas are addressed in the earlier sections of the bill. And uh, this is directing VAPTA to come up with a standard methodology for the maps. Um, but so that's addressed in E. So 
On or before December 31st, 2024, BAPTA shall develop standard methodology and process for the mapping of areas eligible for designation <coughs> under 6033 in consultation with the department and ERB that shall integrate elements in the regional plan and plan for a municipality. The, me the methodology and process shall recommend a streamlined procedure for minor amendments by the ERB to the boundaries of the approved designated area upon request by member municipalities to map eligible areas for designation under this chapter. So I do want to flag that yesterday you did, there is language about minor amendments. Um, again, this, this language dra was drafted in a different silo, so I don't know if this is re redundant, um, that part, but Um, do we already we already direct them to do that in the other section of the bill, or is this the only place we've directed them to do that? So I don't think. No, I don't think this concept of standard methodology is discussed in the prior section on the future land use maps. I just think it adapts the language and adds it into the statute. I don't think there's a specific directive. Okay, so. Catherine, you agree with that? That there isn't already anywhere else in the building. I do agree. Right. So, should this section be in a different section of the bill? It feels like it to me. Use your land use map section? Is there a logical. But I think that, yes, I. that's where I. Thank you. That's what I was sensing. Okay. Um, So we're going to move this section on. Okay. All right. <clears throat> um, the last subsection here is um, G. The regional plan future land use map shall be submitted to the ERB for review and approval with the with the advice and consent of the department and the board on those downtown and village centers and neighborhood areas per 4348. Do you, you want to say something? Yes. That should go. Mm -hmm. G should go. Well, and depending on where I move it, it would be redundant potentially. Wait, where are you moving it? Well, there is already a directive um, where for the regional plans to be submitted to the board. Right. So we were saying strike it. Said yeah. Well, I'm moving this whole section that it's currently in. So sure. E, not the whole section. Oh, I'm not moving. The, why? Oh, you yeah. you just want to move E? Oh, I see. E E could just be a session law provision, honestly. Uh, but I mean. Sure. Yes, yes. You're right. We just were focused on being. Okay. You, I think, appropriately were a step out. And so, moving the whole mapping by regional planning commissions into that section makes sense. Okay, that doesn't actually may make sense. The, the G may make sense. Yeah, and face of consent is a weird phrase here anyways. <coughs> Review and comment. Review and comments are from the LG that we keep using. Okay, so I'm gonna just agree that this whole section belongs with the future land use <coughs> section of the bill.
Next is the designation of downtown and village centers. So as we've talked about, the overall thing that's happening here is that the existing five designations are being condensed into two designations. And one of them is this concept of centers, downtown and village centers. The other one is neighborhoods. <coughs> So page 107, line 18, designation established. A regional planning commission may apply to the ERB for approval and designation of all centers by submitting the regional plan future land use map adopted by the regional planning commission. The ERB shall seek the advice and consent of the department and state board on areas eligible for center designation as provided under this chapter. An application by a regional planning commission shall contain the regional plan future land use map that delineates all centers eligible for designation within the municipalities throughout the region. The regional plan future land use map shall identify downtown centers and village centers as the downtown and village areas eligible for designation as centers. The application shall also include evidence that the municipalities have been notified of the Regional Planning Commission's intent to apply, evidence that notice of its application has been published in the Regional Planning Commission's website, information showing that the eligible regional land use areas that the standards for designate and information showing that the eligible regional land use areas that the standards for designation established in this chapter. Uh, it does seem that this is redundant with the future land use, or potentially redundant most of it yep. with the future land use mm -hmm. map section but it does also seem like there needs to be something said about this in this chapter yeah I think <clears throat> you need to have something here but just something much shorter maybe that just refers to the future land use maps section maybe just section A one Um, well, as long as the rest of this is covered in the future lane, I don't know. So I, actually, I don't think it's redundant. Okay. Um, and so this is a this is a question that I've been trying to line up. So <coughs> this is specifically looking at identifying the downtown centers and village centers as areas for des eligible for designation. So I don't think currently the regional plan map section actually specifies that. I think there is reference to it. Mm -hmm. This is, I think this is more specific. So maybe the reference needs to go the other way. Does it, why do you want it to be shorter? I'm just, um, I mean, if this process is already covered somewhere else, Sure. Yeah, I right. So this has been really tricky for me because the regional plan maps are doing a lot of different things, and right. this is specific to the designation program. So yeah, so I, I guess I see what you're saying. Um, I don't know if there are thoughts. I think I'm just going to think that the point was it's redundant, but I also know that it does. I think this is a link that needs to stay. And Representative Smith and then Thank you. Uh, just a question. Should this bill be split in two, two bills mm. to simplify some things? Well, we've been working hard to integrate them, so splitting it now would be uh, a step I, in the I, I know. Direction. I should have asked you this two weeks ago, probably. Um, yeah, Representative Bongard. <laughs> <laughs> I think it. 
it is important to stay integrated, but I understand why you're asking the question. Um, I've been thinking about this, and it just that the ERB process, the board thinking about the maps wouldn't even really be thinking about designations under this program at all. They're designating villages, they're designating 1Bs and those that are 1A eligible, and then the program, the downtown program, or now the incentive, whatever we're calling it, the investment program, just uses that to apply their benefits. They, they take what is given to them by that having to do with land use, and they apply their benefits accordingly. And so while the two fit together on one level, I think we're going back to making this too mixed with the, the ERB thinking about the, the investment program isn't, I think, the way that I've been envisioning this bill. And I think we're, we're making it needlessly complicated. I think what we need to do is just have those handful of statuses determined by the ERB and then That's this program overlays on top of it and uses, utilizes what's laid out on the maps and has been approved on the board and they apply their benefits accordingly. And I think we keep slipping into the board getting involved in this program and I don't think the board is involved in this program, right. the ERB. The designation right. process is an RPC and ERB process that we're, like, that's on these pages. Yeah. Thank you. So, I don't know if that confused, I'm trying to simplify, I don't know if that confused, Simplifies or confuses, but. Just see where, like, do some. Uh, well, just, uh, I understand what you're saying. When, when you say the designation process, to me, you're talking about the incentives. And what you just said was the no, designation. the process of making the designations. Like, like, the actual programs to benefit the designated centers is programming, but like actually designating the centers is a, is a process that's RPC led and ERB approved or something like that. And okay, that's helpful because that's more along what I was thinking. The other thing I was just going to flag, whether or not I'm sure everybody else is on top of this, but I feel like we started making some of these distinctions about status and separations like 20 pages ago. Um, so, or maybe it was 25, 40, 40. Well, I just, I, I'm not sure if we were in, like already there at the beginning of the ERB, or rather at the beginning of the future land use language. So yeah, I'm just flagging that I think when we come back, like yeah. to, to well, your point about, you know, maybe there could be a linkage, I think the next version will, will show where we missed it. Yeah. Well, and we'll try to correct it and show those corrections so we can track them, but yeah. Yeah, I already, well, I already started going through and getting all of them, of so. Of course you did. Excellent. Great. So, Representative Roy, I guess I'm back to feeling like this whole section 5804, most of this doesn't belong here because it's about the designation process. Which seems like it belongs in the future land use maps section, yeah. except for at the bottom of 109E. Benefits, this is a long section. Benefit steps. Yeah. Oh, and then there's some other stuff up here about transition that seems relevant. Catherine, did you have something to add? Yeah, I would. I would agree. I think the whole this whole application process that's in this designation section is a holdover from the silo creation of the bill, yeah. and simply a reference to upon approval of the future land use map yeah. under that section, then these benefits start. And then you do the benefits and steps. I guess I'm confused though, because going back to what Representative Bongarts was just saying though. You have to make a decision about if so we have land use categories. So what land use? There has to be a reference to what land use categories 
fall into this designation. Yeah, and I think that's what I'm saying, that you could say upon approval of the environmental board, they want the ERB of the downtown centers and village centers, and you can refer to the specific land uses. Okay. Then, and shouldn't take out the whole process part. Okay. And that's something, there's something very similar to that already in the neighborhood section. Okay. Some similar language already. That could also be removed. That there's parts around it could be removed yeah. and then just that, that simple process left in. steps that we're getting into here? It's the benefits ladder. Oh, yeah. So, benefits. Thank you. Okay. Step one, step two, step three. That's right. Okay. There's steps. And unfortunately, we have the department just left. Department just so. left. <laughs> so, just in my mind, step one adheres to the areas that are not 1B, the villages. Step two, Wait, can we, can we stop? Yeah, we, we haven't, okay. there, we haven't okay. gone there yet. Sorry. So, Sorry. yeah, like, yeah, I think okay. orienting us, first of all, we just talked about moving a, a bunch of this section or deleting it. Well, I actually think you're only striking one sentence. So, on page 108, uh, so it's subsection 2, which will be renamed. So, I guess maybe the sentence needs to be reconfigured but it sounds like you're striking the last sentence of this paragraph that references the application but then there is here what, are you on line 17 18? where are you uh, so I'm li line 9 on okay so I think we were just discussing condensing this into something or moving this so just to reorient ourselves we're in 58 for designation of downtown village center so we, I thought, talked about just now moving this to the particular use area or deleting it. And I'm seeing that the plan is not deleting it because it's already in the future land use section. The language around application. I, I mean, I guess one thing I could do is just go through and make sure they line up, but I think there needs to be a clear link here yeah. between what these areas are and, and the fact that they are being mapped elsewhere by another process. So if you want to get rid of some of the application language, sure, but I don't think you can get rid of all of it. Right, that's so... Starts on line 13, the application? Uh, yes. the, no, 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 the second sentence. Line so, line 11. the regional plan, future land use map shall identify downtown centers and village centers. Yeah. That one. So, yeah. we'll then we'll pull that into A. Okay. then we haven't talked about B yet, which I think B may need to 
maybe moved, but I think is relevant. So the areas mapped by the Regional Planning Commissions as center shall allow for the designation of pre-existing approved village centers, downtown centers, and new town centers in existence on or before December 25th, 2025. We need to keep. We need to keep it. I don't think we need anywhere else. Okay. Also, I did want to point out, but they have left that this is December twenty fifth, twenty twenty five. I don't know why that. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know why. And, and, and on your timeline, it everywhere else is the thirty first. So I didn't know if they were like masochistic or something or. Uh, well, and you have to, and when you look at the chart, yeah. there are other dates, and so we, you got to pick a date as to when you're sort of grandfathering. Yeah, yeah. and then this whole thing, this transition section next, we should probably not, we should hold. Okay. Um, page 106, uh, line four, is this the same? Are we saying the same thing as the Christmas 25 time? Um, oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, that's where I saw it. Yeah, July 1, 2024, those areas are included. Pre existing. Pre existing non conforming designations. Are you on, you're on, what line are you on? Uh, 106, line 4. So that no, but this begins on one of or 106, I'm sorry, wrong page number. You're, wait, I'm sorry, what page you're Line here? four, page saying the same thing as this inclusion right. section? Uh, well, it's talking, I mean, I guess if you want to get, I, I think these are talking about different things slightly, but because um, um, this is about the methodology that they're supposed to have. But I do agree that all of this is very messy, so it probably can be condensed. Um, yeah. Okay. Do you want to condense it off well, the so, so part of the reason I was struggling with this is that is July 1, 2024. Then we have December 25th, 2025. Then we also have December 31st, 2025. So Isn't the point to grandfather in pre-existing entities, and therefore we would want it to fall on the same date as? Um, sure, whatever date you sort of pick, that's yeah. something. I think what's happening on page 108 and 109 is the clear tie to the fact that this new center designation is the condensing of the three prior designations of downtown village center and Newtown center. Um, so. It is pretty similar to what's happening on 106. I see them as, this, as distinct things, though, but... Right. Yeah, one's the mapping process, the other one's the designation approval, right? Right, an indication that there was these three existing designations that are now becoming... Well, yeah. Briefly, do you, so C is the ERB shall conduct its review pursuant to 4348. Um, 
and that's fine. I believe there. Yeah. Um, all right, so then starts the benefits ladder. So at the bottom of page 109 into 110, a center may receive the benefits associated with the steps in this chapter by meeting the established requirements. The department shall review applications on to page 110 from municipalities to advance from step one to step two and from steps two to step three and issue written decisions. So I did just want to point out that that is the change, a big change that's happening here because currently the state board makes designation decisions, but the department now is going to be elevating areas to steps two and three. If a municipal application is rejected by the department, the municipality may appeal the administrative decision to the state board. So then that is also new, and that's why you're, the board has been giving authority, been given authority to adopt rules of procedure. Um, I do find this to be an interesting concept. Currently, designation dis uh, decisions are not appealable. But they're currently done by the board. Right. right. So now staff's going to be delegated that authority, and I guess it makes sense for that the board to. <coughs> well, right. Though currently the staff of the department assists municipalities in their development of their application that is then brought to the board. So, um, yeah, it is a change in the role there, but. All right, so to maintain, <clears throat> to maintain an established step three center after the initial approval of regional plan future land use map by the ERB, the municipality shall apply for renewal and meet the program requirements upon application for approval of a regional plan future land use map. <clears throat> step three designations that are not approved for renewal revert to step two. The municipality may appeal the administrative decision to the department of the department to the state board. The department shall review applications and issue a written administrative decision within 30 days of regional future land use map approval. Appeals of administrative decisions shall be heard by the state board at the next meeting following a timely filing stating the reasons for the appeal. The department may issue guidelines to administer these steps. The state board's decision is final. Uh, perhaps we should invert those last two sentences, um, just for logic. But um, yeah. So. I'll need to reread. I'm a little bit confused about the step three thing that's happening there, but um, step one requirements. Step one is established to create an accessible and low barrier entry point for all villages throughout the state to access site based improvement supports and conduct initial planning. All downtowns and village centers shall automatically reach step one upon approval of the regional plan future land use map by the ERB. On to page 111, regional plan future land use maps supersede pre-existing designated areas that may already meet the step one requirement. Um, So benefits, a center that reaches step one is eligible for the following benefits. Funding and technical assistance for site-based projects, including the Better Places Grant Program, yes. access to the Downtown and Village Center Tax Credit Program, and other programs identified in the department's guidelines. And funding for developing or amending the municipal plan, visioning, and assessments. clear where that funding is coming from. Um, 
Step two, requirements. Step two is established to create mid-level entry point for emerging villages throughout the state to build planning and implementation capacity for community scale projects. A center reaches step two if it meets the requirements of step one, or if it has an approved village center or new town center under chapter 76A upon initial approval of the future plan, regional plan future land use map and prior to December 31st, 2026. Uh, so, uh, it did just say at the top of this page that the plan, that the map supersede pre-existing designations. I just want to flag that. Um, And then again, December 31, 2026, you gotta, I think, figure out your date there. I'm confused about what you're just pointing out, sorry. So, at the, at, on line one of this page, regional plan future land use maps supersede pre-existing designated areas that may already meet the step one requirement. Yeah. So I think what that's saying is that just because it's already been designated, the map may override it, uh, but then this says it meets step one if it has an approved village center, so a designated. Uh, I think like a previously. Yeah, so um, so it just feels like it doesn't line up quite. So we did go over the transition section on page 109, but that does say that previous designations retain benefits until X date, until approval of future land use maps and designations expire, previous designations yeah. expire, and then the new designations go into effect. Some language about if the land use maps don't get approved, then blah, blah, blah. Maybe just because all the dates were highlighted, I thought we should hold off on looking at it, but we yeah, can look at it. It's a little, uh, it's a little overwhelming with the yeah. yellow, but if the way you were just reading it was actually helpful. Oh, sort of skipping the dates. <laughs> not getting hung up on them quite. Two, sentence by <coughs> sentence, pulled out. On your timeline? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. So, well. So, uh, I think we're at, if, if I'm reading this right, it suggests that they stay in effect until the maps get approved when the maps supersede. Yeah. Yeah. Representative Sevens. Um, so presumably it would be fine uh, to have that approach because the map making process is iterative and it goes between the local communities and the RPCs. That being said, uh, can we imagine an example where a municipality thinks they have you know, a certain designation and then all of a sudden it's not there because the regional plan future land use map supersedes it? Well, it wouldn't be all of a sudden. It would be after all the hearings. Meetings. But right, there is language in the transition section about if an area doesn't get approved, they still get to keep their benefits until 2032, I think. And that was to line up with the timing, the eight year timing or something like that. Mm -hmm. We can go when we have to transition to the maps. Right. <coughs> so we've got, this is fairly lenient. that, um, so we have historic designations, Eric. Yes, designations. <laughs> yes, things that have been there for a while. And so when we go to do the new maps, 
Is it possible for the new maps to change the area of the historic designation? Potentially. Leapfrog development. And so one of the so then there would be a loss potentially of benefits. Reconfiguring of the area in which the benefits are eligible. And so there are some benefits like tax credits. Is that a complication? Well, the, well, a tax credit is awarded at one time. That's a one-time yeah. allocation. Yeah. So, not necessarily. Could be. You could. Could you get multiple tax credit awards? So, if you have a yeah. project, a big revitalization project on the edge of town for a big building, for instance, an old high school. Mm -hmm. um, in the future, you would not be eligible for additional benefits. I don't think it would cut off midstream because you've already been awarded something. The intent is to make it easier to get benefits in the long, the long run here. We make more communities eligible and more parts eligible. And I do want to flag an aside for consideration. It, the designation program currently has size limitations. And I don't, uh, the, the size of a downtown is, I think, pretty compact. Um, and so I, the categories themselves, I don't think, actually have like specific radiuses included. So. I don't know how that's going to play out, but these potentially are larger swaths of areas, potentially. When you say these, the designations? Or what are you talking about? Yeah, because the designation is just going to line up with the category. And the categories don't necessarily have the same boundaries as what's established in the statute. When you say category, that's three T levels. No. I'm talking about the map categories. So downtowns, village areas, hamlets, but not hamlets. <laughs> okay. Um, Did you have something to add? Um, yeah, I think I, I would add that um, the way the statute is currently drafted, all of the existing boundaries for the desi currently designated villages, downtowns, growth centers, land growth areas would be included in the new designated areas. What might change is they might grow slightly because the definition, as Ellen noted, in the regional map, regional land use map, is a, is a slightly broader than the current downtown program. So in fact, the areas eligible for benefits might grow, but the protection of them shrinking, I think, is in the statute with the language at the bottom of page 105 and the top of 106, which does state that our regional land use map will include those current designations. So I think there's protection from the fear okay. that the, the designated areas and benefits could shrink. Mm -hmm. okay. And in fact, there's potential that they could expand. Um, thank you. Yeah, I and then just to, you know, emphasize that, uh, Representative Sebelia on page 106 on line 4. The only exception is if the subject member municipality requests otherwise. Uh, it has the the center has a confirmed municipal planning process and a municipal plan with goals for investment in the center.
On to page 112, so the benefits, in addition to the benefits of step one, a center that reaches step two is eligible for the following benefits. General grant priority for bylaws and special purpose plans, area improvement or reinvestment plans, including priority consideration for the Better Connections program and other applicable programs identified by department guidance and for capital plans. Uh, the, so is this tying into the municipal planning grants? I don't know. I kind of thought t uh, step one was tied to the municipal planning grants, but I don't know. Uh, so next, funding priority for infrastructure project scoping, design, engineering, and construction by the state program. The authority to create a special taxing district pursuant to Chapter 87 for the purpose of financing both capital and operating costs of the project within the boundaries of a center. Priority consideration for state and federal affordable housing funding. Authority for the municipal legislative body to lower speed limits less than 25 miles an hour within the center. State wastewater permit fees capped at $50 for residential development. Exemption from the land gains tax. And assistance and guidance from the department for establishing local historic preservation regulations. Just to know, getting to level two is really quite easy, quite accessible. Mm -hmm. I think that's the step one is like almost anybody. Step two is a little bit. Well, well a good panoply of benefits actually. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, then we get then step three. Yeah. So on page one thirteen, step three. Um, uh, Senator Morris. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, go ahead. Uh, line nine on page 112. Is that a TFD district? Mm -hmm. I think so, but I don't know. And the reference to the speed limits. Other towns can if they haven't achieved step two. Correct. And from what I understand, people are really interested in that. Yeah. So that so the the statutes that are cited here with references these are things that already exist for at least one of the designations already. So so it's reconfiguring some of the existing benefits under the designated area program for step two. Can, can we just double check chapter eighty seven? Yeah, is that what you're doing? Okay, yeah. Thanks. Oh, well, so, the, so part of Chapter 87 is PACE, um, but then the first part is special assessments. So I don't, I don't know if that's, if that's code for TIFFs. Is PACE, did you say? Yeah, so the Property Assessed Clean Energy Program. And that is not a TIF. That is yeah. a different mm -hmm. program entirely. And so the first one was what? Special assessments, and I I don't know if that's the same word. I don't know if that means TIF. All right. I, I don't. Can you find that? Let me do that. My my reason for Madam Chair, if I may finish uh, uh, or follow up, I should say not finish. Uh, my reason for mentioning TIF is uh, don't we have aren't those restricted <coughs> under locations? Or the mm -hmm. legislature is only allowed so many of them. And, Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's needed kind of, right. uh, out by the legislature. Yes, um, but maybe this gives them the authority to pursue it. We'll find out if it's that. Yeah. It's <coughs> Representative Smith, did you have your hand up? Well, I was gonna. I wanted to go along with what Representative Morris was saying. Uh, <coughs> is that a TIF district, or is that something else? We gotta find out. Okay. That's the only part of this that has confused me. 
Oh. Thanks, Brian. All right, so on page 113, step three. Step three is establish to create higher level entry point for downtowns throughout the state to create vibrant mixed use centers. A center that reaches step three and achieves status or maintains step three. A center reaches step three and achieves status or maintains step three as a downtown if the department finds that it meets the following. Oh, there we go. The status, I think we might need to just strike. Yeah, um, I think so. And it, 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 if it maintains a step three, reaches yeah. step three and maintains it. Yeah. Oh, what up? As a sound. It meets the following requirements. Uh, meets the requirements for step two, or if it has an existing downtown designated under chapter 76A in effect upon initial approval of the future land use maps and prior to December 31st, 2026 is listed or eligible for listing in the National Register of Historic Places, has a downtown improvement plan, has a downtown investment agreement, <coughs> has a capital plan adopted under 4430 that implements the downtown improvement plan, has a local downtown organization with an organizational structure necessary to sustain comprehensive long-term downtown revitalization effort, including a local downtown organization that will collaborate with municipal departments, local businesses, and local nonprofit organizations. The local downtown organization shall work to, page 114, enhance the physical appearance and livability of the downtown district by implementing local policies that promote the use and rehabilitation of historic and existing buildings, <coughs> by developing pedestrian-oriented design requirements, by encouraging new development and infill that satisfy such design requirements, and by supporting long-term planning that is consistent with the goals of 4302. Build consensus and cooperation among the many groups and individuals who have a role in the planning, development, and revitalization <coughs> process. Market the assets of the downtown district to customers, potential investors, new businesses, local citizens, and visitors. Strengthen, diversify, and increase the economic activity within the downtown district. And measure annual pro annually progress and achievements of the revitalization efforts as required by the department guidelines. Uh, it has to have available public water and wastewater services and capacity. Has permanent zoning and subdivision bylaws. Has adopted historic preservation regulations for the district with demonstrated with a demonstrated commitment to protect and enhance the historic character of the downtown through the adoptions of bylaws that adequately meet the historic preservation requirements of 4414-1 ENF unless recognized by the program as a pre-existing designated new town center. On to page 115 has adopted design and form-based regulations that adequately regulate the physical form and scale of development. That's existing. So a lot of what I a lot of what I am reading is part of the requirements for designated downtown currently. Um, I don't know off the top of my head if that I suspect that's already in here but I don't know um, uh, tips are called out in this section. <coughs> okay um, and so yeah so then the benefits in addition to the benefits of step one and two a municipality that reaches step three is it eligible for the following benefits Funding for the local downtown organization and technical assistance from the Vermont Downtown Program for the center. So we did have conversations about this this morning, about the downtown program. So this is the first reference we're seeing to it. Tax increment financing location pursuant to 32 BSA 5404A. So yeah, so that's a separate statute. A reallocation of receipts related to the tax imposed on sales of construction materials as in 32 BSA 9819. 
eligibility to receive national Main Street accreditation from Main Street America through the Vermont Downtown Program. Signage options under uh, the 10 BSA section 94, 494, 13, and 17. Certain housing appeal limitations pursuant to chapter 117. Highest priority for local for locating proposed state functions by the commissioner of buildings and general services or other state officials in consultation with the municipality, department, state board, and general assembly. On to page 116. Committees of jurisdiction for the capital budget, <coughs> the host regional planning commission. When a downtown organization locate when a downtown location is not suitable, the commission shall issue written findings to the consultant parties demonstrating how the suitability of the state function to a downtown location is not feasible. That's an existing thing. If the state is looking to locate state offices, they look to the designated downtowns first. Uh, funding for infrastructure projects, scoping, design, engineering, including participation in the downtown transportation and related capital improvement fund program established in 5808 of this title. And then finally, appeal a decision of the ERB on regional plan future land use map approval for designations under this chapter may be appealed to the Div environmental division of the Superior Court within 15 days following the issuance of the written decision. So this. That's inconsistent. Yeah. yeah. This. Depending, you, you may want to call this a holdover, but this was in a proposal originally. I don't. Your chapter on regional plan approvals does not allow for their appeal to the Superior Court. So do you want to strike this? Well, no, this is a whole section <coughs> on centers. So the benefit section has ended, and now we're on to appeals related to centers. Hmm. So, um, yeah. so, just kind of grappling with the two ideas. So, and we talked about this yesterday the non appealable regional plans and who's who's accountable, which is a question that is still kind of lingering for me. Um, who can be held accountable um, if somebody is harmed? <coughs> we were talking about the... Yeah, I guess that my frowning was about harm in that situation. Uh, if you lose, uh, sure. A brief based on what? Uh, change of Well, I, so, maybe, so I, I think based on the decisions, there, there will be, it, so it depends on where you're landing on tier three. If you're not la landing on tier three, being a jurisdictional trigger, that's not, the case. Right now it's a jurisdictional trigger in that bill, right? Yes. And I think yesterday we had the example of um, zoning being something that can, we were talking about notice and zoning and we talked about accountability of uh, municipalities, there are elections, they have consequences, there's really who, who where can, you know, disgruntled folks uh, pursue um, some relief uh, and that. So, and I'm still thinking about that and I actually got a great suggestion, I think, Charlie Baker yesterday. Um, so this is different. This is designations. There are existing designations. And this is the regional plan future land use map approval for the designations. And so there could be a, a change, potentially an increase in the designated area. Is that right? Is that what Catherine? Yes. 
There could be an increase. Okay, so not a decrease. Probably not. I'm just thinking of the leapfrog development. I don't know how much there is of that. Okay, I thought, though, my understanding was leapfrog development is sprawl. Right. <laughs> sprawl that is currently in a designation is not going to be removed from a designation. I believe that's what I understood, so I'd like to be corrected if that's... I'm not an attorney, but the way I read that section on pages 105 and 106, it retains the regional plan. planning commissions will be required to retain the current boundaries in our future land use maps as a minimum. This is why I was highlighting so at some point the future, well, I'll stop. I mean, I, I guess that's a policy choice. Whether or not we're retaining the exact boundaries of the existing designation and then adding, or if you are telling the RPCs to, isn't there a reference to non-conforming designations? So, um, it's like they're included um, unless they're removed by the subject member municipality. And then there's a date certain that the new map takes effect. We just talked to that. So then the appeal, just thinking about those two things which you highlighted for us, are not consistent here. Right? Here we're allowing an appeal, and the recommendation is that we don't. Oh, on page 116? Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> so who could be agreed? in this situation, if we were to remove the appeal. <coughs> so the way we have it in the future land use section is that, uh, that it, an appeal could be made to the Environmental Review Board. And then this one is just, this is like a whole, this is like a whole other idea of having an appeal of an Environmental Review Board decision on the designations go to the court, which is seeming very, um, but it's, it's definitely a new idea for, for a Brian Shoup. Uh, Brian Shoup, NRC. I, I, I believe that is a holdover from conversations that when, if the revitalization board or the old downtown board was making designation decisions that had regulatory implications, that those should be appealed. And that was something that ACCD agreed. But if you're separating the designation process from the regulatory process, uh, from our perspective, who advocated for appeals for past decisions, we wouldn't see any need to have that. Um, it would just be a benefits uh, designation. Thank you. You're reminding me we did hear that last time also. Thanks for that. We really need to hear from this a couple times. Okay. So on, at the bottom of page 116, designated neighborhood. When Act 250 jurisdiction <coughs> was linked to designations, and we are unlinking them. Okay, right. Okay. But, yeah. So, designated neighborhoods. So, the Regional Planning Commission. I know we're pulling the jurisdiction out of the designation. However, the areas, the centers, are <sighs> tied to the future land use maps. 
the thing that I'm the thing that I'm concerned about is that um, mm, I'm I'm concerned about loss. Um, so if you're in a designated area now, and we're ch we're also changing the future land use maps, and we're also potentially changing the tiers and um, exemptions, is it possible for you to fall out? I, I'm sorry to keep coming back to this, but I understand we're trying to disconnect. But I think they are. I'm happy to. I mean, Representative Logan and Stephens. It seems to me that it's not possible unless the municipality the min, uh, municipality wants to do something different. Like that's the language that we see in the planning process is that it includes all the previous designations unless the municipality wants to change it, but it does sound like they could, the designated area could become larger, which would mean the benefits would be better. The economic benefits. Correct. However, yeah, okay. All so the I'm benefits. Just thinking about the Act 250 exemption benefits, well, those are not tied to the designation. That's true. They would also get a status, a Act 250 status, that's sort of corollary to their designation. And conflict between the future land use maps and which the ERB has to approve and designation. Are, are Should we show her the flow chart? The <laughs> this well, it's right here. <laughs> Hasn't been officially graph graphic graphic, but it's, it's here. I, I think it's more around just the area, <clears throat> and um, even if we're disconnecting mm -hmm. from the designation process, the jurisdiction for the status. I think it's a, it's the larger question of appeals and sort of the hierarchy and how we want it to go. Yeah. And I think that um, we'll have that conversation soon. Yeah. And okay. this is I for me I'm thinking this is a little bit about kind of a outlier in that conversation. Okay. But it's important. Like we may when we talk about appeals. If we decide that the Environmental Review Board is as an appellate body, we, we're gonna we'll have to talk about you know currently as the bill's drafted, it has the Environmental Review Board being an appeal for future land use maps actually, and then stopping there, but then also for Act 250 District Commission decisions, and those would be appealed currently to the Supreme Court, not going to the Superior Court. So it's I think we'll talk about what things we envision needing an appeal opportunity which you're bringing mm -hmm. up and where the what's the appropriate body and what's the appropriate end to that decision okay thank you yep um, I'm ready to move on from that okay. appreciate that so designated neighborhoods So just to remind you, there's an, under the existing five designations, <coughs> two of them are overlay districts called Designated Neighborhood Development Areas, NDAs, and Growth Centers. And so neighborhood is intended to capture those two into one area. And so we're going with the word neighborhood. Uh, a regional planning commission may request approval from the ERB for designation of areas of the regional plan as designated neighborhood. Uh, we got to check that cross reference, 6033. Areas eligible for designation include planned growth area, probably not actually, and village areas identified on the, well, and on the regional plan future land use map. <coughs> yes. Yes, planned growth areas. Okay. 
plan growth areas as defined as a land use category in the regional plan section. This designation recognizes the vitality that the vitality of downtowns and villages and their adjacent neighborhoods. And that the benefit structure must ensure that any subsidy for sprawl repair or infill development located within a neighborhood is secondary to a primary commitment to maintain the livability and maximize climate resilience and flood safe infill potential of these areas. <coughs> On page 117, approval of planned growth areas and village centers as designated neighborhoods shall follow the same process as approval for designated centers per 6033 and consistent with sections 4348 and 4348A. So what's going on there? That's, I have a question mark. That's just coming. Talk through a little bit. So this is what we talked about a lot an hour ago <laughs> for this for the center designation, which is that the ERB is going to be approving these maps, and so they will be approving the planned growth areas and village centers, which then translates into designated neighborhoods. Okay. So I'm not sure 6033 is the right cross-reference. It, it might be, but I don't know if that's the right. And then 4348 is the regional plan, and then 4348A is the elements of the regional plan. So there are earlier sections of this bill. And so, like we were talking about an hour, it then strikes all the other references to the application process, because it's just going to use the existing process for regional plan approvals. <coughs> so that brings us to page 118, transition. Uh, do you want me to read the transition paragraph? Probably. Well, we did it before, but yes, it's been helpful. But I have a question because, um, yeah, go ahead. And if you need a second section on transition. Yes. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Let's get through this transition first. So on page 118, line 14. Any municipality with an existing designated growth center or neighborhood development area will re retain current benefits until July 1, 2029, or upon approval of a regional plan future land use maps, whichever comes first. All existing neighborhood development area and growth center designations <coughs> effect July 1, 2024, will expire July 1, 2029, if the Regional Planning Commission does not gain approval. All benefits that are removed for neighborhood development areas and growth centers under this chapter shall remain active with prior designations existing as of July 1, 2024 until July 1, 2032. On to page 119. During the period of transition, no renewal shall be required for the existing designations prior to the approval of a regional plan future land use map by the state board, by the ERB. Only neighborhood development area designations may be approved by the state board. Uh, hmm. <laughs> prior to approval. I was on a different, okay, I'll go now. On the bottom of page 118, line 19 or line 18 and 19 the regional mm -hmm. commission doesn't get approved um, the, <coughs> the, the the regional plans and maps get approved right so the regional plan and maps do not does not get, do not get approval because the, the commission doesn't get approval it's not seek it sounds like it's seeking approval 
Am I reading that wrong? I mean, I think it's sure. Okay. <laughs> Uh, no one else would be seeking that other than the RPC, right? So I think, yeah, it can be planned. I'm, I'm just saying that... They would get approval of their map. Yes, that's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm talking about. But it would, but, it would go to them. But yeah, I can make it maps if you want. Okay. Just, Representative Sackowitz? Um, I'm just wondering if maybe that, on line 19, if that is a typo that gain should be grant? The Regional Planning Commission does not gain approval. Well, if they don't get their map approved, gain, I think, okay. they're not granting it, they're seeking it. Okay. And then on to the next page, we have a question about... And now I'm confused all over again. No. It's almost time. A little break soon. <laughs> Stick with it, team. A couple more minutes. During the period of transition to the program. The approval of the regional future land use map by the ERB. We said we're changing that, right? Yeah. And then only neighborhood development area designations may be approved by the state board. Can yeah, so I think what's happening here is that there is an interest to keep allowing towns to get neighborhood development areas in the meantime. Yeah. Because there's a lot of granting them a lot. Do you have a comment on that, Peter? No, no. Well, that's a question from the committee. I get it. I don't want to stop the put the burden on the board. Yeah. This, is yeah. this is about conferring benefits. Who's going to do the designation program? So maybe it's okay. Seems like a lot going on. <coughs> yeah. Yeah. Can, uh, <coughs> to to step in Logan and then shoot. Uh, well, maybe we should hear from shoot first. <laughs> Brian, do you have something? Yeah, I, I was wondering. You have um, with the housing bill you passed last year, you did extend some um, caps in neighborhood development areas. And I'm wondering if you might consider sunsetting this to coincide with the approval of maps. And, and I don't off the top of my head know what the right dates would be, but to, to allow the Neighborhood Development Area Program to go forward until the regional planning process is, has taken place. So I do want to flag, we have to talk about a lot of the dates here. Um, drafting contingent language is tricky, which is why in, back in the center's designation there are dates on everything. The department had originally a, a proposed just having it be contingent. Um, which is tricky, in a it's not advisable in a statute to be fully contingent, so you should have some year designation, but yeah, you, I had forgotten about, <laughs> well, yeah, we you, could so you also, to it when we, had, when we, when they said they've had their maps, I guess. Yeah, yeah, when they're supposed to have the approvals by, there's, there's a range in there. Yeah, I don't really understand the only. Um, so basically, uh, I think they're focused on housing. Otherwise. Potentially. So this. So until we have the ERB approving regional plan future land use maps, it'll be the state. Basically, what this says is the state board will continue to approve neighborhood development areas, but not centers. Well, so no one really is currently applying for growth centers anymore because it's too difficult. Very, I don't think there's been a recent application for a downtown in a long time, but so really right now the only, and same for new town centers, I think the only applications they've been seeing recently are for NDAs and for village centers. <coughs> So then, well, we're getting rid of Village Center for the incentive program. So that's why it's not listed there. Well, and also we're in the, we're, we're, so we're currently in the statute on neighborhoods. So Village Centers are separate from neighborhoods. Okay. Um, and we actually didn't read the transition paragraph right. for centers. 
Um, so I guess I don't. Uh, um, I guess my question is, do we need the word only? Uh, <laughs> that's your only question. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> out loud <laughs> to, like um, clarify all this for myself just reminding myself that new applications for center designation can be approved by the state board up until December 31st 2025 that's what we say in that transition yeah, on 109 on 109 okay. and applications need to be submitted by October 1 2025 by a date certain on 109 and so this is just different this is just a so taking a different approach to this designation program for yeah. the transition we could add a date certain I think that's where we're heading All right. okay um, let's take a break for lunch